to the homeless. On this cold night, not one homeless person will be sleeping here. Manager of the building, Robert Miller, told 10 Eyewitness News, up until this year, the bathhouse was open to the homeless by Thanksgiving. But this year, the bathhouse will be open on December 4th. Dick and Elisa, we've come inside where I got to tell you, it's a lot warmer. In fact, it's downright steamy in here right now. The question becomes, why is this place closed to the homeless on a night when it's so cold and they say that our shelters are overflowing? Well, it, 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 the answer seems a bit unclear, but as we can understand it, homeless officials here in the Capital District make that determination. Uh, as an example, last year they opened on December 7th. This year they're planned to open on December 4th, uh, and so far uh, they're right ahead on, they're right on schedule, they say. But uh, the, the question still is, why have they not uh, opened this place up? Uh, it, it seems that to be a little bit of a problem. They do assure me, though, they promise me this, that no one will go without shelter uh, this weekend. So the homeless, uh, it's cold out there, but apparently the homeless do have a shelter to go to, even though this won't be open until Monday. I'll throw it back to you now. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sam. In the meantime, the Capitol District is full of symbols of the holiday season. But the very existence of one of those symbols could be threatened in Cohoes, the Salvation Army bell ringers. Lori Stevens has the story from our newsroom. Lori? Dick and Elisa, the Salvation Army bell ringers, have beckoned the generous for 98 years. But in Cohoes, the problem is not with the generosity, it's with the time. Cohoes, cold on this day, but a familiar sound of the holiday season warms the spirit. It makes me feel good when I help people out and give things to people. It really helps make me feel good. Matt is one of five bell ringers in Cohoes. They need more. We put kettles out. That's how we uh, have our money and put on the Christmas effort that we do to help the less fortunate people in Cohoes. The volunteer crunch hits especially hard this year. The Salvation Army expects some 200 families to benefit from the annual Christmas dinner and gift giving. There were about 130 families last year. Matt says it's very important to give up his time. And, and people look forward to it. If I'm not here, they wonder why I'm not here. <laughs> and when I do come here, they say, oh, we're glad to see you. You know, it's just like part of Christmas, I mean, when we're out here. The Salvation Army and those who benefit hope there are more people like this to go around. And indeed, you can volunteer as little or as much as you would like. Now, if there aren't enough volunteers, the donation bins stand alone, and they certainly don't want that because donations can lag. All right, thank you, Lori. Well, postal workers throughout the area are also getting into the act of helping the less fortunate. It's the second year for the food drive in Albany, and now the idea is spreading to other area cities. The whole Albany division is participating. Here today, we're kicking off the Rental County end of it out of the Troy Main Post Office. Letter carriers will collect non-perishable, non-glass items all next week for area food pantries. It's over. After four long months, the 9X strike has come to an end. The Communication Workers of America just made the announcement. All union members are expected back on the job beginning at 12.01 Monday. Yesterday, most of our area locals had already ratified the new contract. They have just been waiting for state approval. Residents of Pittsfield, Massachusetts will be shelling out a little more for their gas bill. The state will allow the Berkshire Gas Company to raise its rates. The company will be permitted to raise rates by 9.4%. Now, the gas company had requested 16% gas increase. The increase is expected to generate $3.4 million. Schenectady has a new budget. The bad news is taxes are going up again. But the good news is not as much as originally proposed. There was going to be a larger tax hike. Well, now it looks like Bob Lawson, our eyewitness news reporter, has that story. Bob? The $43 million budget means a 15% increase in property taxes. That translates into a $61 increase in the tax bill of the average homeowner. As the tax rate goes up $12.99 per thousand, dollars and 65 cents per thousand less than mayor karen johnson originally proposed i don't like it i don't like it at all it shouldn't be like that it should be going down if anything everything's going up so i guess we have to expect taxes to go up too they have to watch their spending and uh, 
keep it down, that's all. City Council President Tom Isabella agrees. He says if the city doesn't find a way to control its spending, no one will be able to afford to live here. Things aren't quite that bad, believes Mayor Karen Johnson, but she admits the budget is delicately balanced. The tough thing about this budget is that they've put $600,000 of revenues in it that they may not get. If sales tax revenue falters or state aid is cut, deficits and painful cuts could follow. We're looking at a deficit. Uh, it's not a balanced budget. To save money, the city will reduce from three to two the number of paramedic rigs on the street, fire engines to be used as backup. The mayor says it could improve medical service. Paramedics disagree. To run around the city in a big fire truck, they don't have the mobility of the smaller vehicle. Another problem area, police overtime cut by 20%. It could mean fewer cops on the street. Bob Lawson, 10 Eyewitness News, Schenectady. Among items the council eliminated from the budget was Mayor Johnson's controversial proposal for a garbage removal fee. A grand jury calls it quits without handing down any indictments in Schenectady County, and that tops Eyewitness News at a glance. The group's been looking into a case of $10,000 missing from Schenectady Police Headquarters. The grand jury turned out a nine-page report on how the police department could be improved, but it remains sealed. State investigators continue to investigate a sex scandal at the Department of Transportation tonight. A hidden camera apparently videotaped two maintenance workers engaging in sexual acts in the DOT building. Now, Office of General Services officials confirm that the investigation is indeed underway. They say the workers under investigation have not been disciplined, suspended, or for that matter, even fired. Careless Smokey may have sparked a blaze at the Robert Hooks home in Rensselaer. Three people are homeless after the two-alarm blaze at 1119 First Street. No one injured. But this is the second time fire crews battled blazes on that street. Just 30 more days and we will enter another decade. 1990 isn't that far away. And once again, Albany has big plans for ringing in the new year. Happy New Year! <laughs> Last year, you couldn't keep the crowds away. This year, the fourth annual first night is expected to be even bigger and better. We have so much more to offer this year, we think, for everyone in every walk of life. And we do want to encourage families to come out, as well as couples or even singles. In 1986, the first first night drew 4,000 people. Last year, 13,000. And we can look for even bigger numbers this year. That's why First Night is expanding. Now there will be more than 50 sites throughout the capital. And you can do everything from psychic readings to ballroom dancing to magic shows. There will even be a rock band for the teens. Parents can feel very safe in allowing teenagers to come down as a group, take the buses around to the various locations that should be of special interest to them. The one thing you can count on not seeing at first night is alcohol. This huge festival is meant to bring families and friends into the new year safely. All you need to do is buy a button for just $8 before December 29th, and you will have access to all events and bus rides on December 31st. Boy, what a deal. Up next on Tonight Witness News, a new airline touches down at the Albany County Airport. And some women getting a late start in life and proud of it. On Explanation and Family Health Watch, stay with us. Tonight's 10 Eyewitness News is brought to you by True Value Hardware. There is some welcome news tonight for travelers using the Albany County Airport. Better believe it, another airline's launched service from Albany today, promising low affairs, especially on heavily traveled routes to Florida. John McLaughlin joins us now with that story. John. Dick, we're talking about Midway. That's the Chicago-based airlines that's been doing all those radio and TV commercials, and now they're serving the Capital District. We'll make it like this. Go like this. The obligatory cutting of a ribbon, and Midway is in business here. Three daily flights to Philadelphia, with connections there to Chicago and seven cities in Florida. I was joking around. I said their wheels work, but the main thing is that they have... Uh, one-way service nobody else does. Midway's family plan gets your whole family into the Florida mood for 10% off even our best fares. Midway's offering an introductory $99 fare to Florida for this month only, promising highly competitive fares thereafter. Both in Albany will definitely see a reduction in fares. 
not just from Midway, but from other carriers, do you think, in response? Any carriers that, uh, that are certainly in competition with us. Competition is good at the Albany County Airport. The more planes you come in, the, the better the prices are. For the pilot of this inaugural flight, a real homecoming. John Ives lives in Glenville, and he's finally flying out of an airport near his home. So I'm going to be home more often, seeing my wife and my children. And it's Christmas, and I'll be off Christmas. Of course, the Florida connections are good for vacationers, but for business people, a flight from Albany to Chicago might be the answer. All of the northeastern cities that we're going to serve initially out of our Philadelphia hub, they can connect to Chicago and are under consideration for direct service. See ya. The pilot kisses his wife, and Midway is often flying the latest competitor for your travel dollar. Well, what about the competition? Well, U.S. Air's Jim Fitzpatrick tells me however low Midway wants to go on its fares, you can be sure that U.S. Air will be at least matching them. Dick DeLisa. All right. Thank you, John. In tonight's Family Health Watch, a drug that helps drug and alcohol addicts kick the habit does not do the same for smokers. A University of Rochester study says the drug clonidine hydrochloride can help prevent restlessness and agitation in people who try to quit drinking and doing drugs. But... Researchers say it has no effect on smokers. The study was conducted on 185 smokers. Half were given the drug, the other a placebo. Also in Family Health Watch, more women are having children later in their lives. That's the word from the Center for Disease Control tonight. Researchers say more women are having kids after they hit age 30. They say the number quadrupled between 1970 and 1987. And this trend is likely to continue, according to statistics. Up next on Tonight Witness News, the snow, is it about to blanket our area? Well, meteorologist Rick Flaper will have... And a local college exercises the right to honor a custodian. That story is still ahead. Stay with us. So we could have a double-header problem. Yeah, I us. think we are going to have a lot of weather activity this weekend. Tonight is going to be cold. Some of the areas will see below normal, t below normal, certainly below zero temperatures. Ooh. And we're looking at a potential of a coastal storm during the latter part of the day tomorrow. Big that, or mezzo -mezzo. Well, uh, mezzo -mezzo for us right now, but that can all change, as we know very well here in the Northeast when we deal with coastal storms. Cold today did not reach 25 degrees, 22 was the high at the Albany County Airport today after a chilly start to the day, certainly. Low this morning was 10. Normal high and low we can expect, 41 and 25. Record high of 67. Boy, I wish we were there. Set back in 1934, five below the record low. We may be close to that. Set way back 1875. At the airport, under clear skies, 14 degrees right now. Relative humidity at 53%. The wind chill is minus 11. And the barometric pressure is on the rise with cold air coming in from 30, 34 winds west, 14 miles per hour. They'll die down a little bit later on tonight and no precipitation to report. At 6 o'clock, it's cold everywhere, especially the farther north you go. Weather observer in Averill Park checked in. Thank you. 11 degrees above zero. Saranac Lake, 5 below zero. Watertown, 3 below. Messina, 4 above. Glens Falls at 11, as it is in Bennington, Pittsfield, Massachusetts, checking in at 12 degrees. Here's the satellite map. Big ridge of high pressure to our north. That always means cold weather for us, and it will settle in over us, keep our skies clear, and keep our temperatures cold. The next problem, you can see the clouds moving into the center parts of the Great Lakes. There is a storm system up there, and a leading edge of slightly warmer air moving into the Great Lakes. That's why we see the clouds. But the sequence of events right now, and that's the big question mark, for Saturday afternoon, the primary low is going to be in the eastern and northeastern portions of the Great Lakes. The secondary low pressure system, the coastal storm, is going to form somewhere on the coast, and that is the problem. Right now, the guidance is indicating that it will be a little bit too far to the north and a little bit too far to the east to give Albany a significant amount of snow. If it forms a little bit farther to the south and to the west, then we will get the six or eight inches that it looks like at least portions of New England will get. Right now, I'm going for the lighter amounts. We'll get new guidance in tonight, and I may change it, but right now, it looks like a major snowfall event for coastal New England again. Here's my forecast for the remainder of this evening. Our skies will be clear, temperatures will be cold, lows near zero around here, five to ten below up to the north. 
for tomorrow. Early sunshine giving way to increasing cloudiness during the afternoon. Snow developing by late in the afternoon, 25 to 30. For tomorrow night, snow. Right now, 1 to 3 inches around here. Heavier amounts the farther east and to the southeast you go, 15 to 20. For Sunday, light snow early, tapering off to flurries, windy and colder. Highs falling through and from 25 to 30 degrees. For tonight, southern Vermont and the Berkshires, clear and cold, lows near zero. Below zero in some of the sheltered valleys for tomorrow morning sunshine. Afternoon clouds on the increase, snow developing, highs 25 to 30. The long range outlook gives us snow on Saturday and some snow on Tuesday with continued below normal temperatures. Okay, gotcha. Oh, and ahead in sports, Union College is off to its date with destiny. Harvey has that and more coming up in sports. Harvey joins us with sports, and we had the ever-colorful Kevin Rooney in our studio earlier, and oh, he had some things to say. He's waiting for you to come down to the Empire State Plaza. <laughs> or <wants> anybody. <laughs> down tonight. <Anybody. laughs> the flowers are on their way for you, Lisa. Oh, <laughs> Let's start off with baseball, because the prize free agent pitcher, Mark Langston today, we're going to get to Kevin Rooney in a second. Mark Langston today snubbed the Yankees, signed a five-year, $16 million deal with the Angels, and makes the 29-year-old left-hander the highest-paid player in baseball at a cool 3.2 million per season. There he is, Mark Langston, 12 and 9 with the Expos last year. They're off. The Union College football team has made its way to Fairham, Virginia for tomorrow's playoff game. Channel 10's Dan Murphy was there at the airport this morning as the team left Albany. Being able to leave the frigid Capital District today for any reason would be a thrill, but for the Union College football team, boarding a plane this morning had an extra special meaning since it would be taking them to Ferrum, Virginia, where they'll be playing in tomorrow's NCAA Division III semifinal game. That's a pretty good feeling right now, getting ready to take off. I like playing in the games. That's, that's a good kind of nervous. This, this isn't too fun right now, but hopefully we'll get down there and play some football, have some fun down there. The Dutchman will be facing a Ferrum College team that boasts a pair of 1,000-yard rushers, a challenge for Union's 1,000-yard back. I think it's very important that we do control the ball, keep their offense off the field. I, I have confidence in our defense, but I guess, you know, if we control the ball, they can't score. As for the Union game plan, head coach Al Bagnoli is promising some razzle-dazzle. We even have more formations in this week than we've had in the past, and we're going to really try to get them in awkward situations and make them think, and... Uh, we're going to be moving people all over. With a win tomorrow, the Dutchmen get to make one more trip to next Saturday's national championship game. From the Albany County Airport, Dan Murphy, 10 Eyewitness Sports. And Channel 10 is heading down to Ferrum, Virginia. I'll be down there tomorrow. Dan Murphy will be here bringing you highlights, and we'll have post-game wrap-up, everything. Tomorrow, keep it right here for your complete information on Union College. Now, the committee to bring pro hockey to the Capital District will be in Michigan this weekend, pushing for a minor league expansion club. Albany County exec Jim Coyne foresees big hockey, big league hockey, here one day. I just see hockey as a, as a sleeping giant, and I, I think it really, really can uh, go well. And I, and I do not dismiss the fact that this uh, could possibly be an NHL city sometime in the future, but we have to start someplace. Now today we, we learn the real reason why Mike Tyson isn't fighting Razor Ruddock in Edmonton. See, local promoters didn't come up with the necessary bucks. And former Tyson trainer and friend of Elisa, Kevin Rooney, says he knew it all along. The table money that King was supposed to grab, and maybe he said Mike was going to get some. Now if Mike, is, if Mike is allowing King to let him stoop like that, that he has to take on the table money, because he does, he's the heavyweight champ of the world. The money didn't come across the board, and I said it, when it first happened to a lot of friends, that something was wrong with the money. And no, he was sick, he was this, he was that, which is all untrue. And now, today, you read today's paper, they're finally saying, well, the money wasn't there. And that, like, they're trying to say, well, Don King did us a favor by letting the, the fight go uh, a few more weeks. That's all, that's all baloney. Kevin Rooney, colorful guy, a lot, lot of things to say, Kevin Rooney. We'll have a lot more next week. You can see him tonight, Empire State Plaza. Oh, I wish Big you could have heard the outtakes, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Harvey. I love it. We'll have those next week. Okay, you promise. <laughs> yep. In our last word tonight, the Albany Law School gym was dedicated tonight to a man who's dedicated his life to the school. The newly renovated gym was renamed the John DiMatteo. He has worked for the law school for the last 26 years. The students in the older classes voted to honor DiMatteo. They also picked up the $31,000 tab to refurbish the gym. That's great. What an honor. That's all for Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. We thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again at 11 on Nightcast. ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings is next. And have yourself a real good weekend. 
When you see news in the making, call the 10 Eyewitness News Line at 462-WTEN.